We all know what a telescope is, but if you tried to describe one, you might say something like, it's a tube with lenses in it, which would be quite wrong. A telescope is just a device that lets you see far away things close up, and you may be surprised to discover that neither a tube nor lenses are required. The first telescope was created in Holland, probably by a Hans Lippershey in 1608, and yes, it was a tube with lenses in it. But lenses are heavy and expensive and tend to bend different wavelengths of light differently, making distant images blurry. Johannes Kepler, Galileo Galilei, and Christian Huygens all used this sort of telescope, though, and to great effect. It was so revolutionary that Galileo was imprisoned for the knowledge he obtained from it. Before his persecution, Galileo was working on a new design for a new telescope, one that used mirrors instead of lenses. But the world would have to wait for Isaac Newton, fresh from getting hit in the head by apples and inventing calculus to come along and actually build the thing. Newton's reflecting rather than refracting telescope was the first of its kind. But it wasn't long before a more advanced model, the Cassegrain telescope, with one parabolic primary mirror reflecting onto a hyperbolic secondary mirror, kicked it to the curb. Laurent Cassegrain published the design of his telescope in 1668, and it remains, to this day, pretty much the standard, from the telescope in your geeky neighbor's backyard to the Hubble. Once we had the Cassegrain system, the design was no longer the limitation. The atmosphere was. The air around our planet, even on the clearest days, scatters light and makes extremely distant observation impossible. While a lot was done to improve on the Cassegrain design with bigger, better mirrors, the only way to leap forward was to put one in orbit, which is exactly what we did in 1990 with the Hubble. And the Hubble is magnificent. I believe it to be one of the primary legacies of our time, providing some of the most inspiring pictures and detailed data about our universe, stuff that we could never have acquired without it. But what comes next? Well, I got to learn all about that when I visited the team responsible for building the next big thing in telescopes at Northrop Grumman in Southern California, the James Webb Space Telescope. Astrophysics every 10 years, you know, 2000, 2010, does a survey and says, what do we want? and they said, we want an infrared telescope. The spectrum of light is massive. We see only a very tiny percentage of that, and there are telescopes that can see it pretty much every wavelength. But perhaps the hardest part of the spectrum for astronomers to see is the infrared. IR radiation is everywhere. We're bathed in it all the time, so any detector designed to see faint infrared light has to contend with all that background radiation. It would pick up heat from the Earth, from the sun, from nearby machinery. There's just no way to block it all out. Well, actually, there is one way put the telescope a million miles from Earth with five sheets of insulating plastic between it and the primary IR source in our solar system, the Sun. Everything about the Webb telescope is there to help it see into that one blind spot that we still have. Things, for example, like the size of its mirrors. So you will see pictures just about as good and as finely and in much detail as you see from Hubble just in the infrared. And you can do this because the mirror is so much larger. The heat shields. It's almost 600 degrees, right, from, from one side to the other. 600 degrees Fahrenheit. 1.2 million SPF, I think. The location of the telescope. Infrared lights. A lot like heat radiation, so the whole thing has to be very, very cold. And that's why we're putting it out in deep space. And the mirror's gold coating. And the wavelengths of interest. Gold is better at reflecting infrared wavelengths. So the question remains, what will the web be able to show us? You can tell things like um, what kind of chemicals are, are in atmospheres of, of exoplanets, for example, or you can tell what uh, molecules are in a certain galaxy, or, or all these different things. You can tell how stars are forming, how many stars are forming. All of that in the very beginning of the universe, too. In 2018, when the web deploys, all will be revealed, and the next chapter will begin. And we are always revealing here at SciShow, so if you want to keep getting smarter with us, you can go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments for us about the James Webb Space Telescope, we're in the comments and, of course, on Facebook and Twitter.